So uh, today, I would like to talk about the uh, RF noise coupling, understanding, mitigation, and impacts on wireless communication performance. So uh, this is the outline of uh, the presentation today. I will uh, give you some backgrounds of the, this type of the research and uh, the, some uh, technical uh, components are given here. One is the physical noise coupling at the IC chip level. And uh, then I will go on to the RF noise interference at the wireless system level. And then I will also uh, talk about some uh, examples on the mitigation techniques and evaluation results before going to the summary. And uh, in this talk, even though this is a dear program by the three state circuit society, uh, basically that the SSC provides the uh, more circuit design contents. But uh, today my talk will a bit more focusing on the simulation techniques and the evaluation techniques or verification and validation measures. Uh, not so much focus on the circuit uh, design itself at this time but uh, i hope those the topics are informative to you uh, i don't know what kind of the background what kind of the daily or professional works or uh, what kind of things you're learning as a student uh, but uh, this is a kind of a a bit uh, I, I i really like this kind of a topic and i would like to share my uh, experience and also the uh, ideas to you and the so it's uh, Please enjoy and uh, uh, for my, for my talk. So anyway, so at the uh, now we are in the era of the IoT Internet Internet of Things, and there are many different types of the wireless communications uh, surrounding uh, in my in our daily life. Uh, as you can see here, uh, there are some uh, so-called edge devices. Uh, functioning at the sensor nodes or sometimes actuator nodes. Those will be independently working, but always to be connected with some other things uh, by using the wireless communications in many cases. And there are different types of the communication uh, protocols or the structures like uh, the uh, low cost ones like Zigbee or Bluetooth low power and Wi-Fi. Those are the channels connecting the base stations with those edge devices. But at the same time, some of the other ones are directly connected to the, uh, the system, large system like uh, the cellular networks, 3G, 4G, and 5G. And uh, the this part on the left hand side is so called M to M device domain, machine to machine connectivity domains, and the uh, right hand side is so called uh, global network domain, or sometimes we call it backhaul, uh, the uh, connections to the whole world. And uh, those are the fundamental the scheme we really need to use the IoT devices in the daily life. So machine-to-machine -machine connectivity is, one, once again, this is very important, uh, the keyword, I, I, I believe. And uh, without any support by the human beings, the machines can be connected to the other machines uh, automatically and working autonomously. And uh, in those view, the wireless channels are very needed. And uh, we have the very different types like uh, uh, ultra low power types, narrow band types, high speed types, and uh, also that we need uh, a wider coverage as features of those kind of wireless channels. And uh, of course, the technologies and the systems are well developed, have been well developed to uh, establish those, the uh, connectivities. And uh, however, there are many issues to be solved uh, from the viewpoint of the circuit designs, viewpoint of the electromagnetic compatibility, uh, the aspects. Here, the main 
focus on this topic would be on how the IC chips can create interference and also uh, prevent from uh, the interference by those interferers. Here, you can imagine, here is one of the uh, IoT node, which have the many different type of, types of devices in a module. Uh, RF components can be situated with the big FPGA and also uh, microcontroller units and the power management integrated circuit as well. Those will be compactly integrated in a module. In this situation, we have many, many switching circuits surrounding the RF wireless devices. So, as I mentioned in the previous chart, in the IoT era, everything will be connected wirelessly. So the RF channels, wireless devices, wireless channels are quite important, but those are always be facing to the coupled noise from the other components, as I mentioned, the FPGAs, MCUs. This is basically because of the switching operations of the circuits. For instance, we can easily imagine that the digital circuits are always switching to change it, their, their logical values. But at the same time, if we look into the PMIC, power management IC, we always have the DC-DC converters with uh, sometimes it's switched to type DC-DC converters. There are big devices that handle the uh, sometimes milliwatts or watts. Uh, those devices are regularly switched or regularly switching by the control of the uh, uh, digital controller for the power efficient power conversions. If we see the RF devices in the left-hand side, for instance, even in the chip itself, we has many the interferers. Here, this is a typical designs. Uh, there are the sea of logic cells and some analog devices, analog circuits situated or located on the same dial. Those typically that we call the mixed signal or analog digital, uh, the well, uh, integrated uh, chip, the, when, when digital circuits are operating, the switching currents are flowing through the power lines and those will create some noise and that will be coupled into the analog circuits and uh, the, uh, some interference can happen even in the chip. As I mentioned, in the, in the, in the package or in a module, those can happen. And also if we see more big uh, devices like electronic systems, uh, this is one example of the uh, power modules in the, uh, the wireless power transfer systems for, toward the electric, electronic vehicles. We have big the devices and always switching and create some noise. So a semiconductor, switch, semiconductor IC chips are always switching in the most of the designs, and that can cause uh, serious wireless interference in the system. Multi-million gate digital circuits we, have, we would have, at the multi-gig digital data interfaces like uh, Ethernet or CAN-LIN and many other types of wire lines, and uh, also high wattage power converters those are the working together with the much more wireless communication devices in the system. So the switching circuits needs to be well understood or sometimes well the uh, modeled for the simulation. And also we need the countermeasures try to solve those noise coupled issues in the system. So there are some uh, ways of characterizing those noises. The, uh, the image on the left top gives you the onboard noise measurements. In this case, we would have the small antenna 
that can be scanning over the board, for instance. And once the uh, current flows on the uh, printed circuit boards, for instance, those current will create a magnetic field and that can be captured by the uh, loop antenna. Uh, this is a nearby, very uh, proximate, uh, very uh, near field measurements of the noise uh, on the board. If we looked into the chip, we may have the on chip, uh, the noise measurement technique using uh, probing front end showing here. The a source for a circuit that can sense the voltage variations at the input. The output will be immediately digitized by uh, analog to digital converter or the simply just uh, with our uh, single comparator uh, for the comparison, making the uh, continuous comparison with uh, the output of the source floor with the reference voltage at the time of the strobing point given by the clock sources, for instance. But anyway, this is a very simplified sketch of the uh, on the uh, eight analog to digital converter. And that can uh, capture the uh, noise within the die. Onboard measurements and on-chip measurements will give you the way of characterizing the noise at the IC chip level. But we also need to know what would be the impact of those noise uh, on the system performance. Uh, in the wireless con communications, the, uh, we always have the, some uh, the standardized uh, protocols or the signal signaling te techniques. For instance, uh, LTEs for the 4G and uh, some others. But anyway, uh, the digital modulation signal can be given to the board or the chip. The output from the RF circuits can be uh, analyzed by the spectrum analyzer like, like this. So this is a kind of the system level uh, uh, integration of the evaluation system. And uh, here is a chip having the RF circuits along with the digital circuits. And uh, in the, during the operation of the RF circuits with the incoming modulated signal, and the output will be analyzed continuously by the spectrum analyzer, but at the same time, uh, when the digital circuits are operating, some noise coupling would happen. And we now see the, what's the uh, influence of those noise on the system level performance of the RF circuits in terms of the wireless communication uh, communications. So on board, on chip measurements can be connected to the system level response of the RF circuits. Uh, in terms of the noise coupling uh, effect. And this is a vision. And what kind of the output we can get from those measurements or the evaluations? The next slide uh, on the left uh, top, this is a typical example of the onboard uh, measurements uh, by using the uh, tiny probe. And uh, in this, I, I would say this is a, uh, the size of uh, or dimensions of like uh, uh, 10 centimeter times 10, 10, 10 centimeters. Uh, the blue to the uh, red are give you ideas of the strength of the EM noise at the point of the uh, antenna. The antennas can be scanned over the printed circuit board. And at the same, at each of the point, the uh, level will be recorded. And uh, finally, a uh, graphical sketch will be uh, coming up like, like, like the chart shown here. So if we have an IC chip in the center, of course, the chips are continuously consuming some power because of the internal switching activities. The, we see the large noise in the position of the chip. But we see some blue area. Those areas, noise are not so problem. problem. But on, in the area in the, in the bottom, 
we see the green or some area we see the red areas uh those points we, we will have the big uh, noise uh, because of the operation of the chip and the propagation of the uh, currents and the emission of the noise. This is a, a typical example of on onboard noise measurements. And the image of the on-chip voltage noise measurements are given here. As I mentioned, the uh, chip are continuously switching because of the clock signal given if we consider the digital circuits. So the very uh, the regular voltage uh, variations are happening on the power supply nodes of the chip or on the ground nodes of the circuits. In this particular example, I would say this is a 1.2 volt uh, DC voltage is here. So this is a power supply nodes, uh, but the regularly switching because of the regular switching, the noise are given like, like this way. So we see, we can, I can say that noise can be measured, but as I mentioned in the previous chart, one of the important things is that what's impact those noise will give you uh, from the viewpoint of the wireless communications. In this particular example, the, uh, Digital modulation uh, in the uh, LTE format is then converted in the RF uh, receiver chain in the chip. And this is the output from the chain after the conversion. So uh, in this particular case, five megahertz signal bandwidth are then converted to the DC, uh, uh, the zero, Hertz uh, plus minus 2.5 megahertz. And uh, some leakage are seen in, in, the, in the band. Uh, DC leakage is given here. This can happen all depending on the design, but uh, this can happen. But at the same time, we see uh, some other spurs. In this case, CW, the carrier wave, this is an intentional uh, the, uh, tone additionally given to the uh, modulation signal. But the, we also have another one. This is a noise spurious, uh, coupled noise from the digital circuits on the board or on the die. If we have the spurious in the band, uh, we would see the degradation of the uh, communi wireless communications because of those uh, spurious uh, tones. So this is this this I I gave you uh, some other images of the what noises what uh, kind of the uh, evaluation we can do so this and the more uh, how that the uh, system metric can be used for the evaluation of the noise impact on the wireless communication systems in this case. This is a, a, another sketch of the uh, evaluation system. Uh, here is uh, uh, Alex, uh, the receiver chain uh, in, in a chip for the LTE uh, types of the modulations. This is an example. And uh, this is a, uh, put on the printed circuit board, PCB. And uh, once again, that the modulation signal are coming from the signal generator. Basically, those the modulation signals are calculated by the RF system level simulator. The so actual LTE modulation are done in the simulator, and the physical signals can be created by the signal generator. And those signals are given to the input of the LTE RX frontend and uh, done converted. And uh, uh, finally, we can split the I and the Q components uh, in the channel. And that can be captured off chip by using the signal analyzer. Uh, sometimes we call it spectrum analyzer, but nowadays the most of the spectrum analyzers have the two or, or more input channels for the digitization. And uh, basically the signal analyzer had an big AD converters and those uh, can uh, digitize the incoming I and the Q uh, 
uh, signals, and that can be again uh, analyzed by the RF signal system simulator, digital domain and the digital domain. And then we can calculate what's the impact of the, uh, for instance, if we have the, some RF interference that can coupled into the RF front end chip, the, the impact or influence can be measured uh, in terms of the uh, EVM, uh, error vector magnitude or BER, bit error rates and or throughputs by using the system level simulator in a digital domain. So now if we have those chains, evaluation uh, chains, we can uh, evaluate the RFI. Uh, this is the abbreviation of the radio frequency interference in some sort of uh, wireless subsystems. Uh, wireless communication can be degraded because of the coupled noise, and that those can be measured uh, by the system level, uh, the metrics like EVM and BER uh, under the presence of the interference. And uh, this is the combination of the software level analysis like a simulator and also the hardware level, uh, the uh, sometimes test chip or the test set and the simulator and software simulator and hardware test systems are combined or concatenate or integrated. Uh, this is sometimes we call it the uh, hardware in the loop simulator. So in this case, the hardware transceiver and the software simulators are connected in a closed loop. So what's the actual, the uh, measurements we can do? This is a, one of the video I would like to show you today, uh, image of the uh, system level analysis on the impact of the interference in RFIC chip. Here, here is the, uh, the antenna. In this case, the noise will be injected to the device from the antenna. And here is the system board, and we have a chip, uh, not, not visible but we have a chip underneath the board actually and uh, the output that uh, the input will be coming uh, and also the output will, will be connected to the system level simulator i showed you in the previous chart and in the back side we see the uh, monitor uh, the uh, and uh, here is the uh, down converted the signals after the uh, uh, split of the IMQ by the RF front end, as I sh ex explained in the previous uh, slide. So let 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 me let let, let me, uh, just a second. Okay, now the video starts. If we don't have a, any noise, in this case, very uh, the uh, ideally we have the LTE signal with a five megahertz. Uh, bandwidth, but if we have the noise, the shape changed. Uh, the uh, without noise and with noise, we see the difference in the in the shape at the uh, shoulder. But in reality, we have some in, uh, we have uh, uh, in, uh, the impact even within the uh, channels. So once again, so that we have the if we inject sub noise, the uh, spectrums are changed because of the noise. And uh, this is the uh, actual, the demonstration of the interference uh, because of the noise coming into the uh, signal bandwidth of the LTE, for instance. And then we have the uh, system level simulator and that can uh, uh, measure the uh, performance like a throughput. In this case, horizontal axis is showing the signal power of the LTE uh, input to the Alex uh, receiver front end. Vertical axis gives you the uh, throughput calculated by the system level simulator. 
on the output from the receiver chain. In this case, IQ, uh, the IQ output is given to the signal analyzer. AD converters are not included in, in this uh, uh, chip, but uh, the, we can use a uh, uh, signal analyzer for the analog to digital conversion, as I mentioned. And uh, the digital data stream are the analyzed by the system level simulator. And uh, we have the two plots here. First, uh, I would like to see the green ones. In this case, if we see the throughput of more than 95% as one of the, uh, the uh, threshold uh, for the power, in this case, uh, we can see the, uh, I, I can say that the minus, minus 95, uh, sorry, minus 93 dBm input power uh, can be sufficient for achieving the throughput of the high of the uh, 95 percent of course we have more strong powers always the signal uh, throughput can be higher than 95 percent but if we reduce the power down to the minus 100 dBm, the uh, throughput will be well reduced because of the uh, smaller signal power so in green one is uh, one of the typical uh, case of the uh, receiving channels in this particular chip. But in some cases, the, we need more power to achieve the throughput of the higher than 95% because of the incoming noise, for instance, inband noise or inband spears. Those will be degrading the performance of the receiver channels. And finally, we need more input power to get the uh, throughput of the higher than 95%. So this chart is a case with some uh, noise. And uh, this chart is a case with uh, reduced noise. So we need to have some measures, countermeasure techniques, uh, to mitigate the impacts of the noise and recover the uh, performance of the uh, receiver channels. This is, is the main goal of what kind of countermeasure techniques we have and how we can evaluate the effect or the impact or, or, or the advantage of those countermeasure techniques by seeing the system level performance. We have the many the uh, uh, techniques to uh, mitigate or to suppress the noise. Uh, sometimes we may have the, the capacitance, the coupling capacitors on the power supply lines, on chip or on board. And of course, we have some specific uh, techniques like a magnetic film that can absorb the electromagnetic uh, power coming from the circuits or coming from the power supply lines, those two or some other techniques can be uh, very uh, effective. But point here is we need to know what the impact those techniques can give for the systems. So the, uh, we are focusing not just reducing the noise, but also focusing on the improvements of the system performance. Uh, this is the, uh, the system level analysis we need, the reason why we need the system level analysis. So now I would like to go more, more into the uh, uh, part of the simulation models. And then I will uh, go to the other sections of my presentation today. So as I mentioned that the, we, have a, we need the models for the understanding of the noise generation mechanisms and also noise coupling measurement me mechanisms and also the how the circuits or devices will be uh, the responding to those coupled noises 
those are very uh, physical level detailed analysis. Uh, the device model we need, and also we need a sequence subset network models uh, for the chip level analysis. And also we need a chip power model for the digital circuits uh, creating noise and also power delivery network model. And the chips are always packaged and assembled on the printed circuit board. In that, uh, from those, uh, the uh, ideas that we need to have the assembly models uh, for the package and also printed, printed circuit uh, board. So those are sometimes uh, chip package system board models we need and the very detailed physical models as classified. And uh, we also need the system level models uh, to see the, what's the impact of those noise in a system. For instance, the wireless systems, as I uh, showed you in the previous slides, uh, there's sometimes we use the numerical models for the first principle derivation and also data flow models. This is a very important uh, for the connecting the analog, uh, the noise coupling to the digital uh, signal processing or digital uh, wireless communication, uh, the uh, algorithms. So, Obviously, the different type, different layers, different types of the modeling and the simulation techniques are needed uh, for understanding the phenomena or understanding the uh, uh, the the closed loop of the noise generation, noise coupling, noise interference to the system level uh, response. So uh, sometimes we can uh, have the full full set of the simulators or the system level analysis or sometimes we can use the uh the uh, hills a uh, harder in the loop type of the simulation uh for acceleration of the uh, uh analysis now i would like to go into the details of the physical uh, level modeling uh, technologies as i mentioned in the previous chart we if we have a chip that will include the digital circuits and also RF analog circuits on the same die. In this case, uh, we need a, a chip model, uh, including digital circuit as aggressors and also RF analog circuits as victims. And in addition, those circuits are coupled to each other by the uh, background coupling through the sequence substrate. Some designs we will obviously the, the split the part domains, part derivative networks for the digital circuits and also for the analog circuits. Those two will be isolated at the DC level. But obviously that we always consider the frequency components in the high frequencies. Those will be coupled to each other by the capacitive coupling and also the sequence subset network uh, coupling. So that we need a chip level model, including those uh, things. The image is like here. When the digital circuit is operating, uh, the uh, coupled noise will seen on many different uh, points on the second subset, and those will be uh, uh, in entering into the analog nodes and uh, uh, change the uh, performance of the analog circuits. And from the noise generation part, digital circuits will be supplied by the external power uh, through the package and the PCB models. And those will be uh, well, uh, simpli simplified in the uh, uh, equivalent circuit models like, like this, uh, distribu distributed RLGC models for the PCBs. And uh, sometimes we can uh, have the lamp uh, inductance model for the packages. And uh, also we need to see the distributed capacitance in a package or, and also on the PCBs. Those will be uh, included in the equivalent circuit like this. And of course the digital circuit itself can be considered as a variable uh, capacitance and resistance in series. Uh, those will also determine the frequency domain response of the part of the network uh, from the viewpoint of the impedance uh, seen from the uh, external power supply. Uh, sometimes those impedance are uh, uh, represented as ZDD, 
uh, impedance. And uh, the positive network impedance model can be uh, given, or the, this is a typical example. The horizontal axis gives you the frequency, and the vertical axis shows the impedance on the PCB. And uh, the, uh, this is the uh, impedance uh, from the PDD uh, to the ground. And we have the high impedance, but uh, those will be uh, reducing because of the capacitance. But finally, uh, the uh, again, impedance will increase because of the uh, inductance in series. Uh, those are re resonating uh, frequencies uh, given in the 100 megahertz in this particular case. The blue is a simulation of the equivalent circuit, and black is uh, a black line or is a measurement result. So that, that I would say that the uh, the those uh, macroscopic uh, uh, positive network model can be nowadays well uh, characterized by using the some uh, extracting uh, uh, software, and uh, and then we can have the chip power model here that chip can be represented by the power client model for the uh, noise generation and the power network model for the impedance part of the of the power rate network for instance in a die important point here is that we need to include the device level uh the uh, uh profile like uh, resistive materials we always have on the silicon substrate and also we see some uh, low resistive part components on the metal lines and also we will have the uh, capacitance in between metal lines to the silicon substrate and those components will be extracted automatically and uh, uh, produce the two set two suites will produce the uh, uh, linear network model for the simulation. We need to create those models at the level of the chip. Of course, at the device, transistors are very tiny, uh, but millions, multiple millions, or even billions of the transistors are located or integrated on the chip big chip, and we need to create the uh, huge network model for the whole chip. It, it was not possible in, 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 in the, say, the 10 years ago or some decades ago, but nowadays this can be doable. So now the uh, EDA vendors can, uh, are providing the, some tool suites that can handle those big chip and create a linear network model of those chip uh, for the passive part of the network. The, one of the important message here I would like to deliver is that we always need to include the sequence subset models for the noise coupling in the RF uh, device. And uh, for the noise generation parts that we can have the power current model for each of the uh, standard cells like uh, inverters, NANDs, and the free props, those will be captured in the uh, power model, power current models. This is a one sketch of a single model representing the uh, inverter, single inverter, for instance. IT is a, a current, power current signature uh, of an inverter when it uh, switch to the high or switch down to the low, uh, depending on the tool stable, logical tool stable, and all the combination of the input signal and output, output uh, logical values are simulated beforehand and uh, the current power current flowing on the inverter or any types of the uh, logic cell can be stored uh, in a library. This is a, sometimes we call it power library of each of the uh, cells in a standard cell library. And uh, of course, the parasitic components like resistance and the capacitance can also be extracted for each of the gate uh, or cells. And those will also be recorded or the, uh, uh, registered in each of the model for the, for the uh, uh, 
park for the park current model of, of the uh, gate, standard gate. And uh, the active parts and the passive parts can be combined uh, together to form a chip, uh, full chip uh, power model. Uh, this is the image of the final model of the food at the full chip level. Uh, we will have the old, all the power current models for each of the uh, digital uh, standard cells. And also those are connected or tied up to the power delivery network on the uh, metal, metal grids. And those will be coupled or connected to sequence subset models. So big uh, network model can be created and simulated. Uh, this is a modeling, uh, more the uh, uh, high level sketch of the modeling flow. The, the, uh, the input could be the uh, off chip part and the on chip part. In the off chip part, the design data of the printed circuit board, and the, in this particular case, board grid, board grid array types of the package, but anyway, uh, the board and the package data will be given to the extractors. Now the board and package model extractors will create the uh, uh, the uh, equivalent circuit models I showed in in the some charts back, and those can be uh, the represented finally in the model uh, sub circuit models in the form of the spice, and uh, at in the on-chip modeling flow, the full chip layer uh, will be given. And also the power current data, it, this is a, a pre-characterized uh, version of the power current model for the, each of the, of the gate in the standard cell library used in the, this design of a full chip. And uh, the full chip layout will be uh, analyzed and uh, extracting the tool will extract the full chip model. Uh, the the one uh, showed in the previous chart, the network model, and those will be again uh, represented in a spice netlist, spice format, and uh, because of using the same uh, spice format, the off chip models and the on chip models can be combined to the single uh, big netlist, and finally the uh, chip level noise coupling simulation can happen. Uh, one of the points I uh, skipped in this explanation is that there are many uh, different types of the uh, software algorithms uh, to shrink the network models. Uh, this is the uh, uh, beyond the scope of this talk, this talk, so that I will skip, but there are many uh, different ways to compacting the uh, network models into the uh, more uh, the tight, more the smaller scale models, model compactions are needed in the in the final uh, to finalize or to generate the final uh, models. But once we create the model, those model can include the cup, the uh, connections of the chip and the package and the board with the sequence subset network. I would like to uh, give you some uh, uh, example here. Here is a chip. This chip includes LTE Alex front end that uh, I mentioned in the previous uh, section for the measurements. That chip was captured in the model. In this case, the LTE Alex front end is located on the top side of the chip. And uh, in the same chip, we have the digital circuits. In this case, A and G stands for the digital circuits having the arbitrary switching levels. Uh, so the high switching level, the large noise will happen. And the small switching or the silent mode, the, uh, there will be a very small, uh, the noise will be created. This is the uh, kind of the uh, model circuit that can capture the uh, representing the uh, uh, switching operation of the digital circuit. But anyway, once the digital circuit is operating, the noise will be coupled into the LTE uh, receiver chains on the same die. So those coupling always happen. We cannot eliminate the uh, full 
uh, the, the uh, coupling. The, we can have some attenuation methodologies like governments, but still there uh, will be uh, the attenuated version of the coupled noise will be seen on LTE. So to quantify the level of the noise, we put the on-chip monitor in the same die to see the, uh, the level of the strength of the noise at the different locations. Of course, the uh, LTE uh, circuits are quite sensitive. So the uh, very huge wide dynamic range is needed for the on-chip monitor. Uh, but uh, the, uh, in, I would say this is the uh, kind of the 10 bit uh, resolution can be uh, realized by the on-chip monitor to see the, what's the level of the noise coming into, coupled into the LTE uh, front end. Those chips are uh, designed and fabricated in a 65 nanometer CMOS technology. Then uh, once again, the ch chip package board model are extracted. The, uh, the board are captured in the PCB model and the chip was assembled in a BGA. So the, uh, the uh, plastic interpreter and also the uh, bumps and the boards are captured in the BGA model. And the full chip that the LT chip with uh, digital circuits are the captured in the chip model. Now, the simulation and the measurements are compared for the uh, substrate uh, noise in this case. Here is uh, uh, digital circuits creating the noise with the arbitrary uh, digital switching acti activities. And uh, the, the, when the circuit is operating, regularly the noise are seen on some points. In this case, uh, those uh, probe points are given here for the on-chip monitor. In this case, the uh, placement nearby the noise generator circuits are selected for the measurements and also for the simulation. And uh, the horizontal axis is the time and the vertical axis shows the voltage and uh, in the switching events because of the digital circuits is synchronously, synchronously operating with input uh, clock signals. The regularly switched uh, the operations creates the noise, like the shape shown here. And in this case, the, uh, the, 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 the cycle of the, uh, the periodical noise shapes have the uh, periods of the 10 nanoseconds, in this case, 100 megahertz. And the, the top chart gives you the case where the ANG have the activities of the uh, two blocks. This is ambiguous, the, uh, uh, the explanation, but anyway, that the two blocks of the ANG is operating on the top chart and the four blocks of the ANG, uh, the digital circuits were operating on the bottom chart. So uh, two blocks and four blocks, so two twice bigger in the bottom chart. Because of that, the larger noise happened, but still we see the very uh, similar wave shapes uh, on the on the noise. And the, uh, the, in the, for the comparison between the measurements and the simulation, the, of course, some details are not uh, exactly the same, but we, I would say that simulation can basically uh, the track or the represent the uh, major part of the noise uh, coming from the NZ seen on the silicon substrate. So what's the distribution? Sorry, uh, in this chart, as I mentioned, there are multiple locations for the on-chip monitor to see the uh, voltage variations. And here is the area of the silicon in between the noise generators and the RF chains. And here is the LNAs. We also have some uh, probing points uh, just within the uh, transistors uh, placed for the LNA. And here is the chart of the peak-to-peak uh, -peak, uh, noise components uh, measured and simulated. Close to the noise generator, we have the big peak-to-peak uh, -peak noise voltage. But that will be 
attenuated uh, steeply in terms of the uh, distance. So the, the RNA, normally those, those most sensitive uh, circuits will be uh, placed nearby the uh, pads on the periphery. Uh, try to sta stabilize the uh, all the power and substrate on the RNAs. So because of that, the uh, noise are well attenuated. But still, we see some peak-to-peak uh, -peak noise. The attenuation of the 20 dB can be expected in this particular case for the distance from the NG to the RNA uh, with, uh, say, the, something like uh, one millimeter in the distance. But noise can now be well attenuated because of the uh, distance, but still exist. That can be captured by the RNA and amplified and finally uh, be seen on the output of the signal chain. So those are the physical level uh, analysis techniques and the results I showed you. But still the question is how those nodes will be impacted on the system. I think I already uh, showed, showed you the uh, uh, results by using the uh, system level simulator so that I can accelerate my talk here. But anyway, uh, here is a signal generator that creates the input signal given to the RF uh, chain for the LTE uh, the modulation, and that can be captured, and the, the output will be captured by the signal analyzer, and those input and output are the uh, handled by the system level wire simulator on the back side. So hardware and software are the well combined, integrated in the hills environment. So the impact of the noise can be measured by using the ANG in this closed loop. Once again, this is a chain and the noise generator will be operating and the noise will be coupled into the RF chain. The, the level of the noise was simulated or the measured as in the physical level model. But the system level, we need to see the, what's the impact on the, uh, the wireless performance. Now, the uh, left-hand side gives you the uh, measured IQ output of the LT modulation without any digital circuits operations. Very stable, five megahertz bandwidth, only the DC leakage we see. But once the digital circuit starts to operate, then we see the uh, spurious at uh, 1.65 megahertz from the DC uh, frequency in the band, within the band of the LTE signal. After the down conversion, by the uh, RF uh, front end circuits. In this case, the digital circuits was uh, operating at 124.803 megahertz. And that can create the inbound spurious after the uh, down conversion by the 2.12 gigahertz local oscillation. So that means high order of the harmonics of the noise is visible in the uh, frequency band of the interest in the LTE modulation. And those are the, uh, again, analyzed, as I mentioned, uh, the throughput can be a metric for the LTE system. And uh, in this case, horizontal axis gives you the size of the spurious in the band. Horizontal gives you the size of the spurious in the band in this case. And sometimes those spurs can be input referred uh, by uh, considering the, uh, uh, the gain, power gain of the, of this, of the uh, RF front end. And uh, so the input referred nodes are also given in the horizontal axis. And uh, the, this is the trends of the throughput as in the, for the high spurs noise power the throughput will be much degraded. Here is a kind of the threshold. So the spurious, smaller than minus 15 dBm, the system can be tolerated, sustaining the throughput of the higher than 95%. But once the spurious starts to increase more than minus 15 dBm, 
the system starts to degrade very uh, rapidly. So this is the uh, kind of the spree stable threshold. This is a, another important uh, idea for the designers. What the level of the spreas need to be uh, the suppressed by the design or by, by, by the design of the circuits or by design of the physical layout, or sometimes we may add additional techniques to reduce the noise. But the, uh, the goal can be specified by the system level simulation. I would like to slightly change the uh, situation from now on. In this case, you see the very similar sketch, but in this case, the noise are coming from the environment. The noise is coupled to the uh, antenna or the input port, not on the, on the die. In the previous chart, I explained the noise coupling into the uh, chain uh because of the single chip integration of the analog and the digital but not only for that those case but also we need to consider that the uh, noise uh, coupled in the environment we can use the similar frameworks for the uh the evaluation of the incoming noise the impact of the incoming environmental noise on the signal performance what kind of the environment noise I would like to consider is given here. As I showed the, as I mentioned in the very first uh, part of my presentation, a single module that can have the different types of the chips in the board or in the, in the, in the, in the assembly. And uh, if we have uh, uh, digital circuits like a micro microcontroller or sometimes FPGAs, those will be regularly operating in the, with the uh, synchronization to the clock signals. That means regular switching operation happen and then the noise will be created. So in this case, we have the digital circuit, but quite simply that this is a digital circuit and the operating uh, with the clock frequencies. And if we have the magnetic clock on top of the die, we can measure the noise like this. The uh, digital circuits were operating at 100 megahertz, almost like uh, 100 megahertz. And uh, we capture the noise by using the probe and amplification and the captured by the spectrum analyzer. This is a very quite uh, simple uh, measurement uh, setup. But after the analyzing the captured noise, we see very, very many uh, the uh, high frequency components, harmonic components, because of the operation of the digital circuits at 108 megahertz. If we consider the ninth order, harmonic frequency of 954 megahertz of the noise power density of minus 167.1 dBm per hertz, 18th order, 1020th order, those components have strong power. And those frequencies are characterized in the way like this. If we consider the LTE 4G uh, wireless communications, those frequencies are used in some channels. Of course, all depending on the carrier uh, companies, but uh, this is the standardized by the 3GPP, uh, wireless channel uh, standardization organ standardizing organizations. Uh, the two, for instance, 2.1 gigahertz is so-called band one used in many carriers in the world. So if we have the digital circuits, we always have the uh, the undesired radio waves emit, emitted from the the chip having the digital circuit. So this is a very very simple sketch, but a very powerful measurement result and uh, how that can be affected affecting the uh, LP channel. The, uh, the the we use the same uh, the setup and the same uh, principles for the analysis 
uh, we can see the impact. The, in this case, the inbound sprees, or sorry, the inbound, inbound components of the noise can give you change the uh, uh, the channel profiles, and those will be finally uh, degrade the wireless performance. Horizontal axis gives you LTE signal level, input signal level in this case. Without any noise, the uh, uh, LTE signal can give you, in, in this case, that the RF chain give you the uh, the minimum power of the minus 102 dBm for the 95% throughput. But once we have noise, those performance will be much degraded, and the minimum power for the 95% throughput uh, can increase to the minus 92 dB. So 10 dB degradation can happen for the RX uh, signal chain. If we have the uh, digital circuits nearby, those the uh, RF, RF signal chain. This is the uh, case with the full system level simulation, not the hill. In this case, not the uh, hardware in the loop simulation. In this case, ESL, electronic, system level simulation. But now uh, I would say that the simulation can also give, just the simulation can give you the, the idea of the, of the impact of the noise nearby the RF, RF uh, signal change, signal change. So we now have the techniques to uh, evaluate the uh, inbound noise spectrum onto the uh, uh, wireless communication channels. So now we would like to apply those techniques to evaluate the mitigation of the noise by using some techniques. Uh, in this particular case, very typical case in the world, uh, if we use the decoupling capacitors in the different uh, structures, uh, very conventional capacitor can be input, like here, PDD to the ground. We have the, uh, some uh, the capacitors like uh, one 10 nanofarad uh, nearby the chip on the VDD lines. And the equivalent circuit can be shown here. But if we use the three terminal capacitor, that can be uh, much powerful uh, for the, uh, absorbing the high frequency noise components. And uh, those are well uh, characterized and well known in the world. world. And the insertion loss of the 20 dB can be expected for the noise of the higher than 100 megahertz but if we use the three terminal capacitor in comparison to the conventional capacitors. So that means simply that we can uh, expect the 20 dB uh, noise improvements on the board if we use the uh, three terminal capacitor. How that can impact on the system level uh, wireless communication performance. This is a, a case of the examples. At the board level, if this is exactly the same chip and exactly the same board as we discussed in, the, in today's uh, presentation, and here's a chip, here's a, here's a chip. Uh, on the right-hand side, uh, we have the conventional capacitor for the digital circuits uh, on the chip. Once we change the capacitor to the three terminal capacitor on the left hand side, in this case, the, uh, the, we put the three terminal capacitor here. We compare the noise levels by using the, uh, the onboard uh, noise measurement technique. The obviously we see the blue lesions on the three terminal capacitor case. That means the noise uh, will suppress uh, not at the location of the chip, but also in the area of the other components, especially for the area of the antennas in this case. On the conventional case, even at the location of the antenna, we see the very flat green uh, the noise levels. But if we use a three terminal capacitor, the area of the antenna, now we see the blue lesions involving the antenna or nearby the antenna. But anyway, that noise will be sub expected to be suppressed at the antenna area. So for the board level, we see the difference in the noise amplitude uh, just by changing the capacitor. Now what's the 
suppression we can see in the band of the LTE signal. In this case, in the modulation of the LTE at the, in the band one, that means the 2.12 gigahertz in the center and the five megahertz bandwidth. And uh, this previous level can be measured at, at the output of the uh, IQ uh, signal port of the receiver chains. With out capacitors and with three terminal capacitors are be compared. The inbound spreads can now be suppressed. Important thing is that we don't see any degradation in the band, the signals in the band. We only see the difference in the uh, inbound spreads. CW is a kind of the test tones intentionally applied to the uh, LTE modulation, and we don't see any change in the intentional power of the carrier waves as a test signal, but only the spurious can be suppressed. This is a very ideal. And uh, those, the attenuation or the reduction can be measured at the RF output and at the same time on the chip by using the on-chip measurement techniques in the location nearby the RNA. So the, we can compare the effects the, without any capacitor to the conventional capacitor and also to the uh, three terminal capacitor. Spurious strengths seen at the output can be uh, the, uh, reduced, uh, of course, with a conventional capacitor, but also, but more better if we use a three terminal capacitor. 2.93 dB difference between the conventional capacitor and the three terminal capacitor are uh, obtained in this particular example. 3 dB improvements we got. Uh, and of course, this is because of the noise coupled into the RNA. Uh, the uh, our on chip monitor can also give you, you the same sim quite similar results. On chip noise can also be reduced because of the onboard three terminal capacitor. In the conventional case, minus 0.58 deduction, but three terminal capacitors minus 3.36 uh, the reduction. That means the 20 the 2.78 dB difference. Those two are well. Correlated. That means that this means that the noise is major part of the noise coupling is seen on the RNA, the low noise amplifier, most sensitive uh, component in the receiving chain. So the uh, we need to decrease the noise nearby the RNA. This was the message from the measurements. But anyway, those can be obtained by using the onboard uh, the uh, Three terminal capacitor. And uh, finally, the hills can give you the idea what's the impact in the system level and, uh, 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 performance. In this case, that without capacitor, the uh, degradation of the LTE signal power strength or the minimum power strength for the throughput of 94% was something like uh, uh, minus 89 dBm. But once we have the three terminal capacitor, those minimum power will be reduced. That means the uh, system performance is improved uh, with the size of almost 4 dB. So 2.7 dB noise reduction, but uh, we can get the 4 dB improvements in the system level analysis uh, in, term of, in terms of the minimum receivable power by this particular uh, the RF LTE receiver uh, circuits. So uh, now I would like to conclude my presentation. Uh, from the beginning, I showed you the impacts and the necessity of the analysis of the physical noise coupling of the wireless uh, communication systems at the IC chip and also on the boards. Those should be evaluated and related uh, to the system level performance metric by using the system level simulation or the hardware in the loop type of the simulation. Those are needed 
to consider the level of noise, impact of the noise, and also the way uh, mitigate way the mitigating the noise, and the level of the mitigation needed uh, for the designers or for the uh, product engineers. Those are quite important thing, aspects of the analysis uh, for the uh, noise coupling issues to be solved for the wireless communications. And uh, to do so, uh, we need uh, to have the uh, in-depth understandings uh, of the uh, noise uh, associated with the performance indicators and, uh, and also the uh, uh, baseline mechanisms of the noise generation and also the fundamental processes of the coupling the noise into the from the digital circuits is RF. And uh, in the simulation, those uh, wireless systems, components, circuits, and even materials need to be uh, captured in the simulators concatenated at the, uh, in, in the system level. Uh, thank you very much for your uh, uh, listening. And uh, I would like to have uh, the comments and the uh, uh, questions.